because I really do believe that the British Plug is one of the greatest designs that has ever hit the world. What a load of Boris Johnson. I can't comment on that. Okay, on the 7th of July, 2014, Tom Scott uploaded a video to YouTube claiming that the UK plug was the best in the world. And he's not the only one. A quick search of YouTube has all sorts of people across the world on the UK plug train. But instead of offering an objective comparison, he just went on this huge rant about how good his country's plug is. So I began researching Tom's claims and what I found was shocking. Get it? Yeah, you get it. And armed with some seriously boring technical standards, I was able to uncover some unnecessary and even some non-compliant reasons as to why this plug does not deserve the crown. So with patriotism aside, <sighs> sorry. <sighs> I'm gonna finally compare the Poms plug with one of the greatest nations on earth. Now, I'm no expert. Oh wait, yes I am. So listen up, because I'm gonna break this down into five different categories, all of which were mentioned in Tom's video. Then I'm gonna give each country a score out of 10 based on my custom scale. So pull up a Tony Blair and grab yourself a pig's ear, because it's time for an old fashioned plug off. That didn't sound right. Round one, play. What I have to do is plug the earth pin, which you can see is slightly longer, the ground pin here, in first. And when that goes in, little shutters come up and let the other pins in. You cheeky poms. That is inventive and safe. But just just one thing. Why the hell are the holes the same size as a baby's finger to begin with? I mean, what type of Spartan type regime was Big George running back in the 40s? Now, compare that with the Australian plug and it's half the size. Try sticking your finger in that, kids. Actually, don't. Don't try that. Now, I actually can't find any evidence as to why the plug pins need to be this big. And some might say it's because it needs to carry up to 13 amps as opposed to the 10 amps from Australia. But if that were the case, wouldn't Australia have bigger pins for the 15 amp plug top? Maybe it's because of the fuse that's inside of the plug. Oh wait. I'm getting ahead of myself. So it seems to me that the UK had to engineer themselves out of a hole that they really didn't need to dig in the first place? I don't know. Maybe they're overcompensating for something. We've all been there. Righto, over to the scoreboard for round one and I'm giving the Poms a four for overcomplicated engineering. And I'll give the Aussies a seven for simplicity. What, you disagree? Chuck it in the comments. Round two. Because on the live and neutral pins on the bottom, you can see insulation extends halfway through them. If the plug is far enough in to make a connection, like that, all you can touch is the insulation. Now that, that is a brilliant idea. So good in fact, we have it too. And a lot of other countries around the world. But what does the overpriced standard say? Well. As I suspected, the Brits had to add just a little bit of extra length. Dodge it, they were overcompensating for something. So in comparison, the length of the insulation is pretty trivial, but what isn't trivial is the length of time it took for Australia to implement this change. You see, the UK introduced this change in 1984, and fast forward 21 years and a couple of electric shocks later, and Australia finally comes to the party. So for this one, I give the Poms an eight and the Aussies a five. Round three, play. First, there's a fuse. And that's an artifact of when the standard was made. Post-World War II, there was a copper shortage. And, uh, well, it was a lot cheaper to require a fuse in every plug and just build the circuit as one loop of cable going around the whole house than it was to have loads of individual copper strands going out all over the house and a fuse for each. So they just made the house one giant circuit, put a fuse in each plug. That's now safer. What the? Hey Dazza, yeah. Davo, how are you mate? Uh, hey mate, are we going through a copper shortage? Can I still get some 2.5? Uh, are you on drugs? Well yeah, kinda. Mm. Look, whilst copper still might have its issues, there is plenty to go around. I get it, you've got this rich electrical history and the fuse holds some sort of sentimental value, but is it really safer? Right, I grab yourself another beer because we're going deep into British electrical history. 
in 1994. Ah, crap. I knew beers were a bad idea. Let me just change the channel. Here we are, 1944. A set of technical standards were published by the British Ministry of Works. They were called the Post-War Studies. Now, this was in response to the housing crisis post-World War II. The studies were an opportunity to standardize building practices across the board. And one of those studies was number 11, electrical installations. Now, I wasn't actually able to find this particular document, but I did find volume 106 of the Electrical Times, printed in October 1994, and which features direct extracts from the original study. Oh, and uh, it has this interesting article on LADA conditioning. Anyway, the study recommended the adoption of a single ring circuit for a small house, protected by a 30 amp fuse. The idea being that you could divide the current evenly across the circuit. And this was estimated to save up to 25% of wiring costs from pre-war methods. And this, this is the money shot. This was to be complemented by a single standardized plug, accompanied by a three or 13 amp fuse. And with resounding support from the electrical community, the 13 amp plug and ring circuit was introduced. But was it? Resounding, I mean. Well, in the very same volume of the Electrical Times, an article written by Meg Ohm, these engineers. Meg Ohm expressed his disgust with a recommended change to a ring circuit and suggested an equally effective result would be relaxing the existing rules around maximum socket outlets. I mean, you gotta remember that in the early 20th century, Appliances didn't just grow on trees, so wiring a separate circuit and matching the load for each one kind of made sense. Nowadays, we use maximum demand-based calculations for our circuit design, but the principle is still the same. Ensure that you protect the cable from exceeding its maximum allowable current carrying capacity. That's it, you're now an electrician. Cheers. And look, this is not a new concept. It was even written into the original wiring standards in 1882. So to make Ohm's point, a ring circuit with a 30 amp fuse can be wired with a cable of a current carrying capacity of half that. You know what's crazy to me? You can still do it. Not anywhere else, just, just the UK. Just so it's straight. And this, my legendary friend, is why the UK needs a fused plug. Because if faulty, the potential for an appliance to reach beyond its cable's capacity without the circuit tripping is exponentially higher. And not to mention that the fuse actually doesn't trip at 13 amps. That's right, the British standard for domestic fuse length specifies a non-fusing current of 1.6 times the rated capacity. That means that you can happily run 20 amps off a 13 amp plug top without anything happening. Mm. So maybe that's why they design their plug pins like gigantic battering rams. And you know what the irony is of all of this? In the very same study, an alternative to the ring main was suggested using the very same methods that we use today. You pumps, you crack me up. But what about the Aussies? Well, much like the POMs, we did go through some serious iterations before landing on the design that you see today. But like most of the world, we adopted some more traditional ways of wiring and cable protection. So for the beloved fuse, I'm actually gonna give them a four. I mean, you can only imagine the pressures these guys were under to come up with a solution to the copper shortage. Plus they did at least standardize the plug. But in my opinion, they buggered it up. And for the Aussies, I give them a seven. I mean, they don't have a fuse, but we really don't need one. Round four, fight. And this is the really clever bit. This is the bit that not many people know about. You see that slack in the wire just here. In the event that there's a tug on this cable, and something goes wrong, and all these start fraying and coming out, the live and the neutral, the ones where the danger is, they'll get pulled out first. And then the earth wire will come out next. Right are you legend. Hold on to your hard hat, because this one is going to get juicy. Tom is right in saying that the plug top should be designed in a way to prevent any strain to the earth wire before the line and neutral. Here's one I prepared earlier. Look, 
I know I'm a couple of cans down, but there was nothing stopping me wiring that neutral longer than it needed to be. All right, maybe you think this is an extreme example and I'm trying to trash the inherently good name of a seriously epic design. But uh, a quick search on how to wire a UK plug and um, well, so uh, as Tom says, this is a secret that nobody still knows about, and uh, a non-compliant one at that. Now, I'm actually in favor of this feature, and for all my criticism, at least the UK plug top has the ability to have a longer earth, something for which the Australian plug doesn't have at all. So for both plugs, I would like to see a more deliberate design and ensuring that the earth is definitely the last connection. So because the Brits gave it a red hot crack, I'm gonna give them a six. And I'm gonna give the Aussies a three for being lazy bastards. So at the end of round four, it looks like we've got a dead heat. Round five. Fight. If you just let it fall on the ground because you know, you're just throwing something out the way, it will almost certainly end up with the points pointing upwards, which means in the middle of the night, when you stand on it, it is really gonna hurt. Uh, yeah, no arguments here. The UK's plug top is solid gold crap. Ah. Although the Aussie one really isn't much better. What the? Ah, come on. So at the end of round five, I can't really choose. I mean, both of these plugs have their pros and cons and I've still missed so much. Like how both earth pins are longer for safety measures and how the fact that the shutter mechanism doesn't work without the earth pin so when you have a two pin plug for a double insulated appliance, you have to use this crappy little plastic, ah, bugger it. Mate, the UK plug is absolute rubbish. An antiquated dinosaur that was fit for a very small period of time, but should have been left in the past. And you know what's crazy to me? The UK are still designing their way out of old systems. Check out this video to see exactly what it is. What are you guys doing? doing over there? But what we usually do is we end up having a combined circuit, so power and lighting on the one cable. The consumer unit and the loft 